God bless you. Be seated. I guess I'm oh ye of little faith. I figured I'd have a coronavirus audience today with all of the rain. And, uh, I, but I am so pressed in the spirit. I, I told the Lord, I said, if we have 100 people, I am going to preach this word because I have to release it. Um, there's such a, a spirit of the Lord here today. My God, I feel. Whenever I get around the presence of God like this, you just want to weep. You just feel the stirring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It means that, that we're touching the heart of God. There's something, uh, there's a divine opening in the spirit of the Lord that's taking place. And um, <clears throat> I want to um, say how proud I was of Jasmine last week. Uh, <clears throat> just a, you know, if God continues and I get too old, she's your next pastor. And, uh, that's by no means telling you that I'm ready to resign or retire, but um, it's wonderful to have somebody that, that you can leave the church with and y'all don't go home and go, well, I sure wish I'd have known he wasn't going to be there because I wouldn't have came. Uh, <clears throat> marvelous job. She's such a steward and a student of the word of the Lord, and so uh, we're very appreciative of that. Um, I think that we'll just start off. This is a, a message that is, is ongoing in me. Uh, the Lord began to speak to me about three days ago and began to give me some understanding of where we are. I apologize for being weepy. I have up our Sunday. Hallelujah. We are pregnant and we are in the midst of giving birth right now. This is what's happening in the spirit realm. There's, <clears throat> there's greatness in the womb, not just of this church, but of the corporate body of Christ in the earth. There is something magnificent. The, the baby is called glory <clears throat> and it's <clears throat> getting ready to be seen <clears throat> throughout the earth. I want to start by reading out of the book of Joshua <clears throat> chapter 1. I might need a Kleenex. Was that planning on crying? Thank you. They say if your eyes leak, your head won't swell. <laughs> I love the book of Joshua. Starts off, <clears throat> we're going to read, I think, down through verse 7. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, I think it's, it's really wonderful that great men and women who are carriers of the purpose of God, when they die, the purpose doesn't die, it just is transferred. Starts here, Moses is dead, but God's not done. <clears throat> Verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead, now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I do give to them. I want you to really get that in your spirit. <clears throat> Go over into the land which I do give them, and I'm giving it to the children of Israel. I love this verse. Verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I'm not going to, but I've already given it unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness, 
this Lebanon, even into the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. I love how God, not only does he declare that they're going to have land, he begins to define it. He said, specifically, he said, this is yours. This is not just ambiguous or I hope that it works out. He says, I am defining your boundaries of what I have already given to you, though you've never been there. Verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. Many, many times does God say this to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper wherever soever thou goest. You can be seated. <clears throat> I think one of the biggest mistakes that we as believers make when we're believing or wanting God to do something that is out of our arena, it's out of our possibility, it's, it's if it, for it to be done, only God can do it. And we begin to ask God to do it and we tell people, I'm believing God for this. But until you have an assurance that God is going to do it, you will never achieve victory. You will only wind up in defeat because it is a dangerous thing to begin to believe God for something or to declare that God is going to do something, but you are not persuaded that he's going to. This is why Paul said, I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded, hallelujah, that he is able. So for all of this, all of us, Colossians 1, I think verse 12 talks about it, that you and I are partakers of the inheritance of the saints. That means that when you became a new creation in Jesus Christ, that you became partakers as a child of God, that God said, I'm giving you a inheritance. Remember years ago, I was praying one day and I was just kind of complaining to God because my father died when I was very young and I was watching the other young men, their fathers were helping them get their first car and helping them get into their first home and all of that and I didn't have any of those things and, and I was struggling and I was praying and I said, Lord, I don't have a father. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, I am your father. I am your provision. The other, yesterday I was talking to my wife about how blessed that we are and I look back over my life and I think only God could have done this. So it doesn't matter if you are not connected to the right person. It doesn't matter, hallelujah, if you don't have a pedigree. It doesn't matter if you don't have parents that left you an inheritance when they died. It doesn't matter if you're not articulate or you're well educated or you own a business. Faith is not based on merit. It's not based on what you have sown. It's not based on whether you're worthy or not. Faith is based on the fact that I ask my father for it and I believe that he's going to do it and God, hallelujah, doesn't base the answer on whether you qualify but it just simply says they believe and I've got to do it. I've got to release it by the spirit of the Lord. May God lose faith in this house today. May the 
miraculous. I loose the supernatural on you. I loose the inheritance of the Lord. I loose the abundance upon you. I loose the desires of your heart. So God has already declared that you and I have an inheritance. That inheritance is inclusive of health. It's inclusive of prosperity. It's inclusive of joy and peace. It includes a good marriage. It includes children that bring you joy. That's the inheritance. This is why the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. But the way of the believer, hallelujah, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. But it's a dangerous thing to walk into the arena of faith. And yet you're not convinced. Because then you become disappointed Because God is, there are laws that God himself is bound by. He cannot violate his word. He cannot bless you financially as a believer without tithing. Because there can never be harvest without the seed being sown. And so... You can pray all you want about God doing certain things, but if you ask God to do something that makes him violate his own word, he won't do it. He's bound by his word. So you have to make sure that you pray. The Bible taught us, pray according to the will of the Father. So we have an inheritance, But for lots of people, that inheritance is subjective. It's not experientially. They are aware of it, but they don't actually experience it in their life because they don't walk in the realm. I remember uh, listening to uh, one of the great preachers of all time. He actually wasn't a great preacher. He was just one of the most powerful men of God that you will ever come across, and that was Dr. David Cho two greatest men who have influenced me personally in my walk with the Lord. One was a Chinese one man named Watchman Nee. I have about 80 of his books. And the other was Dr. David Cho from Korea. And it wasn't, they weren't, if you just listen to them preach, you go, well, you know, they're not that great a preacher. It was the stories of triumph that they could tell. I don't want to hear somebody give me a great exhortation on how to raise the dead if you've not raised the dead. I want to hear somebody say, you know, God heals. And the other day I was praying for somebody that was paralyzed, and I just said, Lord, I believe you're going to heal them, and they come up out of the wheelchair. That's who I want to hang out with. So Dr. David Cho said he had a lady come to him, and She said, Pastor, she said, she had cancer of the esophagus. She said, I'm dying. I prayed and prayed for God to heal me, and I'm dying. And and he said, well, I'll pray for you. She said, you already prayed for me. It don't work. And he said, I prayed for him many times. And he he told the Lord, he said, you know, I don't really want to pray for him anymore. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pray for you one more time. I'm not praying for you anymore. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, tell her to go write down the Scripture 10,000 times that says, by his stripes I am healed. So he told her, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, you get you a notebook and a pen and you go write down the Scripture, by his stripes I am healed 10,000 times and you come back to me and I'll pray for you. He said it, it took her a couple of days. She must have just done nothing but write. 
He said, she come to my office and burst in. She said, Pastor, she said, I believe it. He said, she wasn't talking anymore about it doesn't work and I'm going to die. She said, Pastor, I believe it. She wrote it down 10,000 times. And, and somewhere in the middle of writing that, it got in her spirit. And uh, she, she had such a, a problem with cancer in her throat that... Get ready because in three days, he said, you're going over into the land that I'm going to give you. See, God will never tell you to do something without some point giving you a word about it. But see, this wasn't just a word to Joshua because if you go all the way back to Genesis 12, the Bible says that God is speaking to Abraham And he said, Abraham, he said, everywhere you put your foot, he said, I'm going to give it to you. And when you read it in Exodus 12, it says, and Abraham left the Ur of Chaldees or Haran with Lot and, and his wife, and he packed up and he went to the land of Canaan. And he's in Canaan land, and God says, Abraham, he says, to you and to your seed, I'm giving this land. And then we get to Moses. It's very interesting because when Moses is 40 years old, he attempts to liberate one of the Israelites from the oppression of an Egyptian taskmaster. The problem is he doesn't have a word from God about it. The Lord's not spoke to him about loosing the Israelites from the Egyptians. And so he attempts to do something without a word from the Lord to do it. There are some things you need to make sure that you've heard from God about it before you step over into that realm. It's not until he's 80 and God says it's time to fulfill the covenant promise that I made all the way back to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Hallelujah. That he said, I'm now getting ready to pull from the spirit realm into the natural realm. And he has a divine encounter with a burning, flaming bush. And God speaks to him and he said, I am sending you back to Egypt. And when you get a word from the Lord, what used to intimidate you and I'll make you run. You won't turn around and hike it out of there anymore. But when the enemy comes in like a flood, when you got the boldness of God in your spirit, you look at devil in the white of the eyes and say, "Uh uh-uh, I've already got a word from the Lord that says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, I loose, hallelujah, the word of God in you today. May there be a flaming boldness that gets in your spirit and makes you rise up in the Holy Ghost. So God had already declared it. He didn't tell them you got to go in and fight and hope that you can get the land. He said... I'm giving you the land. And when Moses got a word, then he became persuaded. Before that, he ran when he got confronted. But when he had a word from the Lord that said, I'm going to go with you. Throw down your rod. Put your hand in your shirt. Look at the signs that I'm doing. And he said, I'm going to go before you, and I'm going to do great wonders. Then Moses was able to do what he did. He could come back to where he ran from and have boldness to confront the enemy because he had an assurance that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. So, the Bible says this, the Lord speaks, I think it might be in Exodus 13, but he said this, he said, I'm going to send you 
into the land of Canaan. But he said, I also want you to know this. I'm going to send my angel before you. And my angel is going to fight for you against your enemies. And he said, the angel is going to drive out the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the list goes on, all the ites. He said, it is a divine intervention that something supernatural is going to happen. And he said, then the land is going to be yours. <clears throat> In prayer, I think it was last Friday, um, we were gone for a few days to get away. And I, uh, I hope y'all missed me because I missed y'all. <clears throat> Amen. Love preaching this church. But I think I've shared with you for I'm going on three months now that my prayer time is only in tongues. And every time I go to prayer, since I open my mouth, I can't pray in English. I pray in tongues. And uh, just to be transparent, I'm getting a little frustrated with it. Because you know, you want to talk in English so you can articulate to God what you want to tell him. <laughs> and you know, you know, God, you're not letting me talk here. <laughs> There's some things I need to address, <clears throat> and I can't talk about them because I'm too busy talking in tongues, and I have no idea what I'm saying. And you may not know this, but you can talk in tongues and not feel very spiritual. How many know that? You know, a lot of times we think that if we're going to pray in the Spirit, it's visitation of angels and goosebumps and divine revelations, but it's praying by faith. And I went to prayer I'm a prayer trail, and I was seeking the Lord, and, and I'm having this conversation with God while I'm praying in tongues. And I, I remember asking the Lord, why can't I pray in English? And this is what the Lord spoke to me, and, and I believe this is going to help you understand where some of you are. The Lord said, because you have stepped into your inheritance, and you have engaged your enemy." that is in your inheritance. One of the laws that God had for Israel was, he said, I've already given you the land. But he said, you have to go in and engage the enemy before you get it. But he said, I will send an angel before you that will fight your battle but he said, you still have to go in and engage the enemy. And it wasn't until Israel went into the land of Canaan and physically, see, whenever God gives you inheritance, we're under this misconception that when we get it, there won't be any problems. The devil only lives in your inheritance. He likes it there. It's the best land. It's the best place. It's God's chosen situation. So he likes being there. But God said, hallelujah, it's not his land. I don't care how long the Canaanites have lived here, the Lord said. It never was their land. It goes back thousands of years to Abraham. God said, I picked this land. When the man of faith put his foot down, now God looked over the angel said, record that. That acre belongs to Israel. Israel. Record that. Oh, he's just went a mile. Record that. Hallelujah. Oh, he's by the Red Sea. Now he's over here by Mount Hermon. Write that down. Now, what was Abraham doing? Now, he was surveying the land by faith, and God was writing the deed down in the spirit realm that everywhere he put his foot. Can I tell you, we've already walked, hallelujah, in some places that God wrote down in the spirit realm belong to you and me, but God's 
said you have stepped over into a dimension uh, to where you have encountered the enemy uh, and you have engaged him in battle uh, and the only way you're going to defeat him uh, is being fully persuaded. You have to have a word from the Lord. I was seeking the Lord. I said, well, why did it have to be in tongues? God said, because you're fighting a spiritual battle and not a natural battle. We have already stepped over. Ever since we took possession of 709 Rivergate Parkway, we stepped over into our inheritance. What we didn't realize was that the enemy was there. That's why you can feel that oppression in that area. And it's why businesses die and the mall has died and all kinds of, of heaviness and despair because it is the inheritance of the Lord. There are geographical locations in this city that in heaven have already been deeded for revival. It's already there. But when you are not fully persuaded, it will cost you time. Because when Moses is speaking, I think, to Moses, he said, it is an 11-day journey to Kadesh Barnea, only 11 days from slavery to actually owning the best land in the area. The problem was the Israelites had lived in a slave mentality for so long that even though they had saw the miraculous of God, there was embedded into their DNA this unbelief and this faithlessness that they could not believe when somebody came back and said, yes, everything that God said about the land is true. But 10 of them said, but there are giants. What they forgot, hallelujah, was God said, I've already loosed an angelic influence in your inheritance and it's going to go before you and take the giants out. I declare to you by the Spirit of the Lord that the hell that we're going through in this nation and the demise that we've seen of so much stuff in the earth is the enemy is saying no, but the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Bible also says he gave the earth to the sons of men. That means that Nesville is the inheritance of a Holy Ghost apostolic, uh, tongue-talking, uh, Bible-believing, uh, shouting group uh, of men and women uh, that still are persuaded uh, by the power of God uh, that we are not going back to Egypt. Uh, we are not going in the town. Uh, we are holding on uh, to the word of the Lord. Yeah. The battle in the Old Testament with the Israelites and the Canaanites was a natural battle. It was over natural land. So there were involved in it natural weapons. But in the new creation from Calvary on, the battle shifts from the natural to the spirit realm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness and spirits of wickedness in high places. This is what happens whenever a carnal Christian encounters in battle a spirit enemy. They are going to automatically be intimidated and lose their ability to fight because the enemy is very intimidating. But when you are full of the Holy Ghost and it's not you but it's Christ in you that when the enemy comes in to intimidate 
intimidate and lie to you and say, you're not going to get this. You're not going to be healed. God's not going to come through financially. You just look at him and say, I didn't come to fight you. I came to evict you. You are in my land. You are in my inheritance. I'm not going to have a battle with you. This is not about who owns the land. This is about who's leaving. And I declare in the name of the Lord that every demon in hell is marching out by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is what I know in the Holy Spirit that many of you, what you are encountering is that you have already stepped over into your inheritance and you have engaged, the enemy has engaged you because he doesn't want to leave. But doesn't the Bible say the battle is not yours? but it's his. And so when I am praying in my personal prayer time, in my prayer language, one of the things I believe the Lord showed me was I am wielding the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God. I'm doing it in a heavenly language, but I am declaring to the enemy Hallelujah, that he is being evicted by the power of the Lord. We refuse to cohabitate. Whenever you read the Samuel and King's Chronicles, ever so often it will say, and Israel could not drive them out. So they dwelt among them as water carriers and wood splitters. But it will make that statement. It will say, could not drive them. I'm thinking, I don't understand that. How can you make them slaves, but they're too strong for you to drive them out? But they became a snare to the Israelites because they got to keep their gods what we're seeing in the church realm <clears throat> with all of this trying to, they call it, you know, well, we need to preach a message of love. Inclusiveness is not necessarily love. It's compromise. Jess and I were talking, and I, and I was telling her the other day, I said, you know, I am not controversial. She said, well, you told that to the church, and they all laughed at you. <clears throat> I said, well, when is just preaching the principles of the Word of God controversial? It's only controversial to those who don't want to live by it. And then all of a sudden, well, you know, it's hate speech and you're not full of love. I got news for you. We are never compromising the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. Now, we are not going to grow at the cost of embracing sin and abortion and gay rights and everything else. No, sir. We're going to give them an answer and a hope that God is on your side and where the spirit of the Lord is. Uh, there is liberty. Uh, I declare to you by the Spirit of God uh, that the word of the Lord that I'm preaching to today uh, is going to be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, we are not just rhetoric. Uh, we're not just spinning our wheels. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's some land uh, that the enemy's been living on for a long time uh, in this nation. Uh, and God is saying, uh, I brought you out of the wilderness for such a time as this. Uh, I put your feet on the inheritance of the saints and you have engaged your enemy but don't fight them declare evict them in the name of the Lord not being persuaded if we can't believe God for we have We've had at least seven different people declare to us that God would pay off our building. 
prophetic people, men that I love, women that I love. And we, we got our last loan. We're, we're still shy to complete a little over $3 million. If $3 million is all it takes to defeat God, then we might as well throw in the towel right now. I remember listening to um, Dr. Cho, and he, he was greatly influenced by Oral Roberts. And he said <clears throat> he went over from Korea to uh, Tulsa because uh, Oral Roberts had built a hospital, magnificent structure, and he said, we were going to do that in Korea. He said, I, I got there, and he said, it was so difficult to meet him. He had to go through all kinds of doors and elevators, and he said, I finally got to meet him, and I was talking to him. He said, he puts his hand on me, and he says, Lord says, don't build a hospital. And he said, well, that can't be God. He said, we already had the money in the bank. <clears throat> he said, but then God begins to speak to me. He says, I want you to start a newspaper. And he gave God all these excuses why he couldn't <clears throat> begin to do the research. Sat down with one of the top people on starting a newspaper in Korea. And the man told him, he said, it will take $1 billion. It will take $3 million a month. And he said, I was so happy to hear that. <clears throat> Because I walked out and I told the Lord, see, we can't do it. <laughs> you know, God can read your mind. So you might as well say out loud what you're thinking anyway. Because it's not like you, you know, you just say, well, if I don't say it, he don't know it. He is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So God likes people that are honest. But he said, you know, today, he said, we have a newspaper half a million subscribers. We've changed our nation. Our president is Holy Spirit filled. And he went down the list of officials in Korea that are Holy Ghost filled. And he said, we maintain meeting that need. There is nothing that God can't do. My, I just feel, boy, I feel such faith Hallelujah, being released by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, by the word of God, I just smash today in the name of the Lord every spirit of unbelief, not only in this building, but to our online church. I'm declaring to you, hallelujah, your inheritance, your inheritance, your inheritance. I, I, bo, 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 son, I, I declare to you your inheritance. Rusty, it is your inheritance, hallelujah, to be totally healed and healthy by the power of God. And I want you to get this. Where some of you are right now, you are in, you have so progressed spiritually that you're already in your inheritance. And you're saying, then what am I so fatigued? What am I dealing with? God said you've encountered the enemy. He's in your inheritance. And the next step that we need to do is God is saying, with the help of the angel, get rid of your enemy. Evict him in the name of the Lord. You're going to have to get a word of God. You say, I don't have a word, Pastor. Well, by God today, you got a word. Hallelujah. And the Lord, he will go before you. He will prepare a path, a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Yea, though I walk through the valley, and the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff they comforteth me for the hand of God is on favor on those that love the Lord the God of all ages may he abide in you and bring you to greater revelation there is a release hallelujah we are evicting we are evicting off of 709 every enemy every demon spirit I release the word I release it in your spirit That's why we're praying like we are. Because we've got a word from the Lord. 
Hallelujah. When we walked into that empty building uh, and we looked at it the very first time, something rose up in us. Uh, me and Linda and Rick, my wife, would look at each other and go, oh my, this is it. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you by the Spirit of God uh, that there is great change coming for some of you. Uh, that the enemy's getting ready to vacate uh, and there's not going to be this harassment. Uh, great is the peace uh, of the pain uh, of the saints of the Lord. Uh, great is the peace of God uh, upon you in the name of Jesus. Stand with me. Prayer partners, come quickly. <clears throat> Right now, this is what I want to encourage you. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I feel like I'm in the, one of the greatest battles of my life. God wants you to hear this. You are already in your inheritance. Hallelujah. And you're saying, what is it I'm dealing with? You have encountered the enemy. You have encountered the enemy because he was in your inheritance. He thought he was going to live there forever. Nobody had ever been able to displace the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Never had they been displaced until a people that had a word from God that said, this land belongs to you. This city belongs to us. This city belongs to us. This city belongs to us. This nation belongs to the Lord. This election belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, may the Spirit of God rise up in your spirit. So don't get frustrated. Hallelujah. You got to be fully persuaded. If our heart condemn us not, then do we have confidence towards God. For there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in love with Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. That God uh, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. The inheritance of the saints is what we're getting ready to enjoy now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we have come as a church, if you need a prayer partner, come quickly. Because I'm feeling a, just a real mandate of God for us just to be in the presence of the Lord. If you want a prayer partner, pray with you. Whatever it is, you can step out very quickly and find one. I give you about 30 seconds to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Harabobobo <clears throat> Sunday. There are so many of you in this building and under the sound of my voice that you did not realize that you have an inheritance. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to enjoy it. That the enemy cannot touch you by the power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, church, let's come as a, as a corporate body of Christ. Let's fill up the front of this. <clears throat> and I want you just to begin to let the Lord create an assurance in your spirit that everything that <clears throat> you've been believing God for, everything that you're believing God for, hallelujah. Everybody in this building that can't, let's find a place.